What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. Continuing the NBA rebuilding series. Today, we're going to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. A pretty decent team. They closed the season pretty good. Nerlens Noel got a lot more healthier. He got a lot more consistent. He got a whole lot more confident. So I'm suspecting him to have a good sophomore year. Just seeing how he closed out his rookie year. I think he's going to have a huge year next year, especially as being the best player on the team. And they getting Joel B down there, so he's going to actually have some talent playing with them in the front, in the back court. Well, in the front court. Now, I'm about to do something new and throw some stats at you guys. I try to stay as much away from stats as possible when I break down my videos because I don't want it to look too corny and too much like I'm reading into so much stats. So when I do my breakdown and my analysis, I try to leave the stats out as much as possible. But with this team, they got they they score 92 points per game, which is one of the worst scoring teams in the NBA. They have 42% re, 42 rebounders. Hopefully that goes up with Joel Embiid and Nerland and the Well playing together. 20 assists per game. Stagnate ball movement. They ain't get enough floor. They don't got enough floor spacing. They don't got enough shooters. So everybody can just close out and rotate to the same people because it ain't too many weapons on the Sixers. And that makes their offense more stagnant. And 100 points per game, making them 20th in defense out of 32 teams. But then again, they don't have too many one on ball defenders. The only good defenders they had to me was K.J. McDaniels and Nerlens Noel, and they were just rookies, and they just was developing their talent. So, of course, of course they're not going to be a good defensive team because they just don't have enough talent to do that. But I think as what scoring-wise, they can just always buy more scoring, like I said in the Lakers video. They can always buy three-point shooters. They can always buy stretch fours. But this team is really trying to rebuild with young talent. So I think the number one pick they should get, they're going to get a top three pick, I believe. And if they do, I think they should go for, uh, this is the only time I said his name, but Emmanuel Moutier is the best pick for the Sixers because he got the highest potential in the top 10. And he can, they need a point guard. And he's a 6'5 point guard with speed, quickness, and athleticism. You ain't going to find that too much this time around the season. And like I said, he's 6'5", he's quick, he's athletic, and he can really take over games with the right coach and with the right help and build his confidence. He could be a future all-star or franchise point guard because he got all the tools and he's doing good overseas. But I think he just needs the right coach and the right talent. Of course, when he comes to the Sixers, he going to have a role mentality because when he comes over here, if they do draft him, he's not going to have the talent to really compete for a playoff spot or for a championship. So he's going to be a lot frustrated and he's going to be feeling like he's playing for nothing. But as long as he keep developing with Nerlens on B and Dario Saric, I think they got a good pieces right now. I think they're going to have, if they can get Emmanuel Moutier, a point guard that they need that got high potential, they bring over Dario Saric. Jordan and B, he been playing, he been working on this game all season, and then he'll have a summer league in a preseason to get some more talent and get some more chances to play against good NBA talent and get the help to develop his game a little bit more. We're gonna see a good backcourt, and hopefully with Robert Covington, they probably can get a good small four. They should have kept KJ Medaniels, but they got two second round picks for him. So we're going to have to see who they pick with those second-round picks. But because KJ Medellin had defense, it's going to be hard to find a shooting guard that can play defense the way he can and how much energy he puts in the game. So I would have kept KJ Medellin at the shooting guard. But Covington is a better scorer. So we're going to have to see. But he's a small forward. So Nerlens Noel, like I said before, he's going to be a good – he's going to have another good season. He ended the rookie season on a high – he, he was playing with confidence. He was taking over games. He was doing all-around numbers. He knows his role on the team, and he played it well. So we're going to have to see how he does. And for free agents, I don't think the Sixers team going to get any free agents unless they young, up-and-coming players like D-League players or undrafted players. 
I think them the type of players the Sixers going to go. They trying to stay young as possible. So I don't see the Sixers getting any big free agents or really trying to spend a lot of money on people. Right now, they're trying to stay under the salary cap and just develop that young talent. So I don't see the Sixers picking up any free agents. And if they can't get Moutier, I think they're going to have to go after a shooting guard that can space out the floor and shoot the ball. They could go for Russell and put him at the two because he can shoot the three and space out the floor. So that'd be good for him and Covington to open up the paint for Nerlens and Embiid and help Moutier get some him some layups because he can they can space out the floor. And we already know that Joel Embiid is a decent shooter. I don't know how good he has got since he's been out because he's been injured. So I don't know how much he worked on his game and how good he is until summer league. We're going to see how good Embiid is. But they ain't going to draft no – they ain't going to get no high free agents. They ain't going to get no – spend too much money this year. It's just all about developing a team they got and the talent they got. So that's what they're going to do. And like I said, I would like to see how Joel Embiid and Dario Saric do in the league because that's supposed to be their future all-stars. So the Sixers, their future bright if the pieces – right now, everybody they picked is a gamble besides Nerlens Noel. He was a sure thing. But right now, they gambled on Saric. They're going to gamble on Moutier probably. And I don't really know. They gambled on KJ McDaniels, and it was a good pick. They gambled on Michael Carter-Williams, and it was pretty good. He turned out to be pretty decent. But then they traded him for a first-round pick. So we're going to have to see what they do. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis, signing out. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.